Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create an inline editing feature like this. So I've got text elements within these repeating group cells. When I click on the edit button, the text turns into inputs that I can then uh, type in and update the record immediately. Hit save, it'll save those changes and I can move forward. So I'm not showing a pop-up, I'm not doing anything too crazy in order to edit the record. It's directly in line within this repeating group and this works for um, any single element that you have on the page or even within a list like this to make it easy for your users. So I'm going to show you how this works. The first thing I'm going to do is replace these text elements that display the first name, last name, phone number with input elements instead because that's ultimately what we're going to be using to edit the names and also display them as if they were text. So I'm going to delete these three and then replace them here with input elements. I'm going to do one input first and do all the styling for it and then we'll just copy paste when we're ready to do the other two. So for this input, this is going to be input first name, just give it a name there. I'm going to remove the placeholder and the initial content I will set to current cells user's first name. Okay, now when I preview this, obviously it's styled like an input. I can click into it. Uh, it's definitely not just a text anymore. So when I view this, um, it just looks kind of like we're about to build a form here. But what we're going to do is create two different styles for this input so that when you click the edit button, you toggle between them. Okay, so by default, I'm going to make sure that this input uh, doesn't look like an input. So first thing is I will disable it here. This input is disabled. That means that when I click in it, nothing or click on it, nothing will really happen. I won't see the cursor flashing. Um, it's just like I'm kind of clicking on a on a blank element there. And I'm also going to get rid of the background and I'm going to make this bold and make it a little bit bigger. So now it looks more like the original text that I had when it was a text element. Uh, but this is still an input. Also, if you happen to be using styles with inputs that you're building this off of, just make sure that the input doesn't have a border either. This um, I pulled this off of the standard input style, and it doesn't come with a border, so I don't need to make any changes there, uh, but just keep that in mind. So where it's at right now, if I preview this page, we're still looking at an input element, but because I've disabled it and I've styled it differently, it looks just like a text and I'm clicking on it, nothing's really happening. Okay, so only when I click the edit button am I gonna to toggle to a different styling of this input. Now what I need to do is have that style saved in the conditional tab. So I'll go to the conditions, I'm actually gonna remove these. Those actually just came with the standard style, so I remove those. And the condition is going to be based off of a custom state. Okay, now before I add this condition, we need to add one more element to this cell. I'm going to group these elements. Okay, so I'll select all three, and then I'm going to group them. This group will continue to pass through uh, the current cell's user, so we can still reference the current cell's user by setting the group to type user and the data source being the current cell's user. So everything inside still references the same uh, record. Now the reason we created a group is because we need to have a custom state saved somewhere inside the cell. Uh, so I'm going to do it on this group here, and I'm going to open up this inspector window to create a new custom state. And my custom state is going to be called edit mode. And the value of the state will be yes or no. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is when I click on the edit button, it's going to change this state value to yes, as in yes, I am in edit mode. And we're going to, based off of that value, we'll change the style of our input. And we'll have a way to toggle it back to no when we're done with the editing mode. Uh, and go back to the default state. So by default, we will not be in edit mode. By default, we're just gonna look at it like this as if it was just a plain text. Okay, now, uh, when I click on edit here, we'll create a workflow, and we're going to set the state, and the state is saved on that group, group user, and here's the edit mode state I created, edit mode, and I will set this to yes. Now I only want it to go to yes when it's currently no. So we need to put a condition on this workflow event here. So when button edit is clicked and when the group's edit mode is currently no, then it can be switched over to yes. 
and I'm just going to create an opposing one so we can switch back. So I'll copy this, I'll paste this here. So one of them's for no and then one of them's for yes. So when the edit mode is yes, then this will be switched back to no. So this is just toggling between yes and no for that custom state value. The whole point of the custom state value is to switch between the styles for the input. So by default, where the edit state is going to be no, by default we're going to have this style for the text. No background, no border, the input is disabled. But on our condition, when the group user's edit mode is yes, then we can remove the disabling. So we'll leave that unchecked. We will also add a background so that it's even more obvious um, that we've basically turned this into an active input. So background style, I'm going to say, hey, we want a flat color now. Background color, um, we'll just do this light gray. If I switch this to on, I can see what it'll look like there. And, that, and, and you can do a border if you want, however you want to style um, your inputs so that it's super obvious to the user that it's an active input that they can click into. And I'm also going to add a condition on the edit button uh, so that it says something else while we are in edit mode. So we'll do group users edit mode is yes. So when we are in edit mode, I'm actually going to change the text of this button to save. Okay, so this will say edit when uh, you are not in edit mode. When you click on it, it'll say save uh, so that uh, it's a little bit more obvious like, hey, you're in edit mode now. If you click this button, you're saving your changes. Okay, so I'm going to refresh this page so that we can see what this looks like. All right, so again, by default, these just look like texts. If I hit edit, we're going to we're changing the state of the um, group from no to yes, which kicks in the conditions for the button and the input. So now my input, I can click in it. It's styled differently, so I can see very clearly that it is an active input. And when I hit save, it switches it back to no, uh, and we can no longer click here. What you'll also want to do is when um, the edit button is clicked and you're going back into the no state, uh, this one right here, you want to run your data change actions as well. So we are essentially saving the changes. So you want to make a change to parent groups user. And in my case, I'm just going to save all of my values where I will have inputs available. So first name will be the input first name value. I'm going to go ahead and really quickly here add my second and third input for my last name and uh, phone number, right? So now I can go back here and add in the values for those inputs. Okay, and then the this uh, input will pull in the last name, and this input will pull in the, not the photo, the phone number, and I'm also going to change the content format to US phone so that we can see that it is a phone number. I just caught a quick mistake here. This doesn't need to be photo. We want that to be phone. Uh, so this will equal the phone's value. I'm going to get rid of that one. You can do this also with um, image uploaders. Uh, instead of having the image element here, you can do instead a picture uploader element and do the exact same thing where you're just changing between two different styles with the conditions. Okay, so we have our action here. Now we're going to preview this page and see it working from start to finish. All right, so you can see that all of our inputs look like regular text. Can't click on them or anything. If I hit edit, then it changes the state to yes, which in turn uh, kicks in that condition for both the button and these inputs. Maybe you might want to change the coloring on the button so they don't look the same. Really all we're changing right now is text. Uh, but changing the color would make it all also a little bit more obvious. Uh, but now I can go ahead and change the fields here. So I'll do Penny, William, we'll do a different, we'll do all zero so we can see that they're different here and click save. All right, so that triggers the workflow. It'll save it in the database and uh, that's pretty much it. There are a lot of ways that you can really get creative with uh, this UX design and really it's just a matter of changing the style uh, so that when you, when the condition kicks in for uh, responding to the custom state, it looks like a completely different element um, and makes the user aware that it's an active element that they can click into and interact with. Thanks so much for watching.